What's up everyone, Chris from Full Steam Designs. So you've probably noticed that there's a ton of companies out there making laser engravers now. I get messaged by like one or two companies every day uh, wanting me to review their products. And usually I say no to them because it's companies that I've never heard of or the products just kind of look like really generic or whatever. But when I saw that Creality, a company that's already pretty well established for their 3D printers, had one available, I wanted to check it out. And so today we're gonna do that. We're gonna get it out of the box, put it together, and we'll see what this thing can do. Assembly is pretty straightforward. Creality includes some great instructions and quite a bit of it comes pre-assembled. Sometimes the belts can be a little tough to set up on these diode lasers. Out of all the machines I've had, this is probably one of the easiest. You just have to get these twist-in locks in the T-slot and then tighten them while putting a little bit of tension on the belt. This is also the easiest when it comes to the wiring. There's literally one wire that needs to be connected to the laser unit itself. Everything else is already set up and connected. There's a couple ways you can control your machine. Much like a 3D printer, you can just put the G-code file right on this micro SD card. You can also use a USB cable to connect your computer directly to the Falcon. You'll need to supply your own cable though. The side that connects to the machine is a USB-C. This is my preferred method as it allows you to make changes on the fly and gives you more control. Now you will need some software to generate your G-codes. There's a couple options. If you have Windows, you can use Laser Gerbil, which is free. Personally, I use Lightburn. It's the only option for me since I'm using a Mac. It does seem to be the more common choice anyways, though. Both programs are included on the SD card. Lightburn will be a free 30-day demo. To get started, you'll need to set your machine up in Lightburn. Sometimes you can click the Find My Laser button, and your machine will come right up. In my case, it didn't, but there's nothing to worry about. Creality has included the setup files for Lightburn and Laser Gerbil. Just select it from the list and you're ready to go. You might notice that this drop down menu only lists a Bluetooth connection. If that's the case, just shut down Lightburn and restart your machine. When it comes back up, you should have the option for a USB connection. Selecting that will cause the machine to home out. The Falcon features two limit switches that will tell the machine where its home position is. For the first job, I'm just going to give some of the included plywood a try. You'll need to adjust the height of your laser to focus the beam properly. This is made easy by using the included setup block. You can find tons of free clip art by searching on Google. People often ask what settings they should use. I recommend taking the time to experiment on your own to see what the effects of different settings are. A good rule of thumb for engraving is about 300 inches per minute at 100% power. If it's too dark and it's burning your material, you can speed it up. If it isn't dark enough, slow it down. After a few tests, you'll start to get a better understanding of what the different settings will do. To start, I'll just let the video run so you can see how fast it moves in real time. You can also adjust your line interval setting to speed things up a bit, but this could affect your image quality. Let's speed up the video a little. Thank you. 
Now that it's done, we can see how our design came out. It's a little dark, which tells me I could probably speed it up a little. You can also engrave pictures. Let's slow this down to the actual run speed and see how it looks. It's not bad, but it's a little wavy. It's probably because the material wasn't sitting flat. There's a couple things that can be done to prevent this. You can simply tape the edges down. Another option is to use one of these laser cutting grids. I'll put a link to the one that I use in the description. It's steel and allows you to use magnets. This is a great thing to have if you plan on cutting designs out. The rest of the footage is all going to be sped up. For cutting through material, I recommend starting at 10 inches per minute at 100% power. Depending on the thickness of the material, you can make multiple passes. This first piece is one millimeter thick. Look at how fine the details are. Now let's set up something a little thicker. This plywood is about five millimeters thick. I started out with the speed set to 10 inch per minute at 100% power and made three passes. It cut through no problem, so I dropped it down to two passes. Again, this was no problem. This is actually pretty impressive for a budget diode laser. Just to see what happens, I dropped it down to a single pass. This wasn't enough to cut through, but it did leave a mark on the backside, so it was close. I dropped down the speed to 5 inches per minute and was able to cut it in a single pass. Once you're comfortable cutting out simple shapes, Try something a little more complex with the same settings. These letters are pretty small, but they still cut really clean. The kerf, or thickness of the cut, is really small, allowing the pieces to fit back together like a puzzle. So far, all I've cut is wood. There's a ton of materials that you can cut and engrave with the Creality Falcon. I'm taking a drafting class and decided to make myself a custom triangle out of cast acrylic. This is two millimeters thick. I was able to cut through it by going 10 inches per minute at 100% power in three passes, and I left a really nice clean edge. The possibilities are endless and you're only limited by your imagination. If you're interested in checking one of these machines out for yourself, I'll put an affiliate link in the description. You get the same great price, but I'll get a small kickback from the company for any sales made through this link. This really helps out the channel and will allow me to keep bringing you guys great content. Thanks so much for watching, and please leave any comments or questions below. I'd also really appreciate it if you hit that like button and shared this video with your friends. And a big thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Until next time, I'll see everyone over on one of these other videos.